It's a Toshiba, I think it's a 5 kilowatt um, unit we put in. It's in a uh, room they're going to make cheese in so they can just keep it to uh, steady temperature. That's the outdoor unit. It's, uh, the room is built in a shipping container so they can move, move the room if they had to. Very quiet. Uh, what have we got? Oh yeah, uh, seven six point. It's about seven kilowatts, I think. Got a seal around the hole yet? Got to do something. Put some foam and mastic around it. Okay. Then we've got a. Under ceiling unit, a two way blow. Um, cold room people built the room a bit too low, so we've, we've had to offset that to one side so they can get their trolleys through um, with the cheeses on. So we've, we've offset that, otherwise, we'd have put it central. Um, got that conduit runs along the lights. Um, that's your fans. I've got the solenoid valve terminated in there, and then I've run a jumper wire across here to the heaters. And what we've done with those is um, I'm not using the bottom heaters, but I've got the top ones wired in series, so they're only about 300 watts, something like that. Um, so, what we can use them for is if the room gets too cold in the winter we can um, bring these heaters on with the fan just to raise the temperature up and it'll just be like having a little 300 watt heater in there. Um, that's what we did with the other room, that seems to work quite well. Uh, the drain fitting on these is inch and a quarter, which is a bit of a nightmare, getting that reduced down to 22. Um, I've got the solenoid in there, I've put a little bracket for it. Uh, got the valve wedged in there. Uh, I've just got the temperature sensor off a cable tie clip. It's just dangling in the air, so hopefully, hopefully in the side it's going to pick the um, airflow up. Uh, I've got the side panels to go on. I've got to cut the knockout into the pipes to go through. And then the controller is in here. We've gone for one of these Danfoss ones again. I've just run that through with a bit of flexible conduit because there wasn't a lot of room. We're actually in a corridor between the two containers now. So we actually stood outside effectively. Um, there was only the gap of the door to get through. And I thought, well, might as well just do it with a bit of flexible. That cover only just fits. It's got to slide in and then the pipes drop into that little knockout. Which is more luck than judgement. Because uh, we had to get the electrician to move his lights over because he'd put them dead in the centre. Um, and then he'd put the smoke head, which is moved down there. That was right underneath where this is. So obviously nobody had said that we had a ceiling mounted unit going in and then so we didn't want to go too far over so we said we'd go 8 inches or 20 centimetres off the wall um, again we've got to get that cover off of that side but uh, yeah could have done with another, another inch Okay, that's the outside unit, it's a Tecumseh Silensis, um, it's a bit different to the Winces one we put in before. Um, comes factory fitted with a fan speed control, it's got overloads for the uh, compressor, LPHP switch, dryer and sight glass, contactor, basically all, you, all you've got to do is join on, join the pipes on the two stubs, which run up the wall. Um, 
and when you live nucleus into it into the top of the switch and that's it crankcase heater on the compressor we've had that on pressure test for four hours that was fine so we've got it vacuum in there um, so what uh, just got to run a bit of conduit and the switch down to there Okay, it's got that wired. Um, uh, that's down to 260. Uh, oh. Sight glass is nice and green. So we're going to dump. Oh, I think the. Um, Design spec called for 900 grams, so we might dump 500 in there and see how it goes. See how see how accurate they were with their 900 gram estimate. Okay, got it turned on. I don't know if the fan speed control is set or even the pressure switch. Probably probably not set to what we want anyway. Uh, not, not a lot of. Um, Uh, it's probably off on the low pressure switch, I think. Yeah, so I don't think that has been set. It doesn't look like it either. Okay, that is just, it's just filling, filled up. There's a few bubbles going through. And we've put 870 grams or 30 grams short of what they said. It took a while to fill up, but I think that's because it's so cold out here. It's probably just about starting to freeze. And condensing temp's quite low. Yeah, I think it's probably uh, wants a bit more heat in it. Might need to adjust the fan speed control. Okay, I'm giving that a turn. Went the, went the wrong direction to start with, but um, giving it a full turn now. That the head pressure's still coming up. Probably 220, I suppose we want it on. 30, 35 degrees. issue with this and um, turned it off. It's half my fault and half half the wholesalers. Um, they use well they send out a kit of parts so you get the, the evaporator, condensing unit, expansion valve, orifice, um, adapter, solenoid valve, solenoid coil, anything like that. Um, dryer sight glass if you need it. Anyway, they sent the coil for the solenoid, but they didn't send the solenoid valve, so... And for some reason, I thought the pipework on this was 5 8 and... 3 8 um, Because I thought this was the same size system we put in, in the other room, which I had to move the other day. Um, but when I uh, looked at the outdoor unit, it was um, 3 8 and quarter off of there. So I've put a 3 8 valve on a uh, solenoid valve, which is what I had on the van. And that noise you can hear is the valve not shutting because the port's too big. And the, probably the speed of the liquid going through the valve is too slow to cause it to snap shut. So uh, I'm going to have to go up to the wholesalers tomorrow morning and get a quarter inch valve. Now I thought, thought I'd show that because it's somebody else might learn from it. It does make some interesting noises.
But apart from that, it's going really well. Um, yeah, we've just got the drain to do. And that's inch and inch and a quarter, which is massive. Um, so that, the corresponding copper pipe size would be 35 mil. So luckily, I, I picked up a 35 to 22 mil reducer. So we'll reduce it and then kick it off to one side and go out the wall. And where we put them brackets on the wall, we can. It's 22 mil pipe, but it'll go in seven eighths pipe clips. Um, yeah, still going. Ooh. You can see the old frost getting on there. Anyway, we'd better go and shut that unit off and pack up, I think. So it's quite cold in here, and then. Let's open that up. I've got this set at 30 degrees. <laughs> She feels like it might not be far for 30 degrees. I was hoping to get this done today, but I haven't got the drain done either, so I'd have to come back tomorrow. But I'm just going to go for the wholesalers. I think we'll shut the receiver and pump it down properly. Okay. We've got the uh, smaller solenoid fitted in there. Um, got the drain done for the coupler in there, so if you've got to drop this pan the cover down, it's you just loosen the uh, two screws off either either side. Um, whichever one suits and then you can you can just push the push the uh, bottom piece up and it comes out of the keyhole slot so you don't even have to take the screws all the way out and then it just hinges down and it'll hang down off the other side. Um, if you need to take it off completely you just say again just loosen them off and then pop them out. So uh, they're a lot easier to get into than the older ones. Um, the, the older ones had a if I remember rightly, they had a central piece over the fans, they had two bits either side, you had to take the end panels off because they were screwed into them, and then at this end you had a lower box that all the water drained into, so it was a much better design. Um, I noticed the screws come lubricated from the factory, they've got some of that white grease on there, so that, that's an improvement. I've just been checking the amperage on the just trying out the defrost heaters. Um, they might want to run the room lower that's a lower temperature than what I was thinking they were going to, so we've, we've wired the defrost heaters up conventionally so that they can run it cooler um, and uh, it will defrost. If they have any problems with the room getting too cold, uh, just put, put a little um, uh, tubular heater in here like you get in greenhouses. We've got plenty of sockets they could run it off of. Um, so this is running now, we've got it set on 7. I think I think we'll leave it, we'll probably put it on 10 degrees I think. Which is going to be a more... Uh, ...sensible temperature. Uh, this has got a lot more functions in it now. It's got two auxiliary relays and you can program them to do various different things. Um, we were going to use the auxiliary relay to bring the heaters on in the room if the temperature got too cold, but because they might want to run the room down at three or four degrees um, at some point, that's below where we would have triggered the heaters. So up that fan. I mean it shouldn't need defrosting now because it's kind of a high temp room um, when, they're, when they're maturing stuff in there. It's easier to, well you wouldn't be able to fit them in there because um, they have to go out that way. You're supposed to have 800mm between the unit and the wall. That was the only place it could go. cut them out, you can cut them in half, you'd have to feed them in from this side and uh, the only issue would be is that you'd have to run a conduit through to, 
power and all this all these wires at the other side as long as you can clear that clear all the distributor tubes and so on anyway I'm wittering away now um yeah so that's working should, there we go just gonna say it should turn off um and with this one we yeah so i come back on at 12 it's got a two degree diff um, with this one, we shut the fan off as well because they, they like um, they don't like too much air movement. Some of them like the air moving all the time. It all, it all depends what sort of cheeses and stuff they make. That's the outside unit. <sighs> pipe work, drain. That's twenty two mil pipe with it. It'll fit in 7 8 pipe clips because 7 8 is like 22.22 mil. Um, so, yeah, that one is about half the duty of that one there. Uh, the same physical, well, this one's actually taller, it's got bigger feet on there. Um, it's a lot quieter. Um, if you stood next to this one running, uh, that one over there, about 10 12 feet away, is actually noisier than this one. So uh, yeah, that's another one off the list of jobs to do.